Your husband, Andy, is here. I know. Andy, where are you? Hi, Andy. Um, Andy is a prince. I would like to rent you out if you're available because, um, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is turning into a whole different discussion. But um, I, an amazing father, obviously, to your, to your two sons. And you say in the piece, Anne, Anne Marie, you write that a partner who shares the parenting load isn't enough because it assumes that most women f will feel as comfortable as men do about being away from their children as long as their partner is home with them. Do you really think the maternal versus the uh, paternal instinct is so strong that choosing family over career is in fact reflexive? Because I know you said you were entering treacherous territory when you wrote this, and to be honest with you, you kind of lost me here. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I'm glad Andy was talking. <laughs> I'm glad you called out Andy. Um, and and uh, actually, Ezekiel Emanuel said last night, he's the first dude. I think we like that. <laughs> and he, he has been a hero through this, and he's a fabulous father. And honestly, um, both of our sons, even though his teenage sons, they butt heads a lot, would say, honestly, that, that I think because of, of the way I work, they have a wonderful relationship with their father as, as, as well as their, their mother. That's essential. Right, having a, a mate who will be an equal partner, I think, is absolutely essential for women uh, who who want to be full career women. Just as having women who've been able to play that role has always been essential for men. So that is a, that is very very important. This was really hard. I never felt, I always worked, our kids went to daycare early, I never felt the need to be home with them, particularly when they were young. I mean, I was always able to, to be there when I wanted to be, and we had lots of flexible time, but I did not feel this maternal instinct that I had to be home with them, particularly when they were young. And I think women really vary, and that's fine. I mean, different women make different choices that way, and that is perfectly fine. What I was trying to say, and I, I, this is hard, but when our son really did need, frankly, both parents, all hands on deck, even with both parents, very hard, and I take my hat off to all single parents, I do not, you know, that is, is very, very hard. When we, I felt that he was making life choices that were very bad life choices, and they were going to affect the rest of his life. I felt, you know, he didn't ask to be born. I brought him into the world. We brought him into the world. It is my responsibility to him. And even if I'm in a job that is affecting possibly millions of people around the world, as I wrote, there are lots of people who could be in that job. There was only one person who could be a mother. And I, based on what I have seen, of men and women, there are many men whose kids need them. When the mom is home, I think they feel it, it's a little easier to say mom's at home and I can still do what I do. They have to do what they do, they're, they're making an income. For many women, I think that tug is, as I said, it didn't even feel like a choice. It was in the end, this is something that I have to do. And I don't, you know, there are so many stereotypes here. Mostly what I would just say is if you feel that, act on it and feel good about it. The, so many women are made to feel bad about those choices. And when I got home and told people that I'd come home because my ten, you know, two year leave was up, but also because of my, uh, our teenagers, they were fine as long as I said, well, I would have lost my tenure. That was fine. They said, that's fine, we understand that. The minute I said, but actually, you know, the most fundamental reason that I'm home is because we have teenage sons and they really, you know, needed us both at home, then I get this slight kind of, oh, I don't really want to hear that. That's, you're choosing your family. That's not the sort of working woman's creed. That's not so acceptable. And that's crazy. We should be in a, in a society where we say, that is great. You are living up to your responsibilities. You're investing in the next generation. That is a wonderful choice to be emulated, to be praised, to be valued every bit as much as the choice to be the first woman director of policy planning. And that, in the end, is really the key. <laughs>